You're welcome to this preview of Reversing Hermon, Session 9, The Watcher's Sin and Christian Baptism. Learning Objectives By the end of this session, we shall be able to explain early Christian baptismal pledges, who were the spirits in prison, and how baptism saves. Hippolytus, in the early 3rd century, observed this. When the person being baptized goes down into the water, the one baptizing shall put his hands upon him, saying, Do you renounce Satan and all his works? And the person being baptized shall say, I do renounce them. Earlier, Tertullian, in the late second century, wrote this, When we are going to enter the water, in the presence of the congregation and under the hand of the president, we solemnly profess that we disown the devil and his pomp and his angels. Hereupon we are thrice immersed. In the mid-first century, the Apostle Peter wrote this, If you ever have to suffer because you are righteous, then God will reward you. So, do not be frightened or distressed by their threats. Instead, honor Christ as Lord in your heart, using language from Isaiah chapter 8. The condition if, used with an optative verb, implies an unlikely future, though a possible one. To reward is traditionally translated, are blessed. In Isaiah, the Lord was Yahweh. Here in Peter, it refers to Jesus Christ. Do this by always being ready to give a reason to anyone asking for your testimony about your hope your expectation. What are some of those reasons? Discuss this amongst yourselves. Perhaps you will mention, Christ died to forgive me everything. Then he rose to give me his new life, and his Holy Spirit gives me joy and hope. What else might you cite as a reason for your hope? Do so calmly and respectfully, because you have a good conscience. As a result, those who abuse you will be ashamed of having slandered your good Christian behavior. You do so calmly, for only God can convince them. Your conscience here does not mean your sense of right and wrong, but your confident assurance before God. Remember, it is better to suffer for doing good, if God ever allows it, than for doing bad. Often to suffer seems meaningless, having no purpose. But it can be better if there is a divine purpose for it. By good we mean biblical standards, whereas by bad, both biblical and social standards. Christ once suffered because of our sins, the righteous one, on behalf of us non-righteous ones, in order to bring us to God. Although his body died, his spirit remained alive. So Christ is our example. He suffered for a divine purpose. The verb translated died in the Greek reads, was put to death in flesh, and remains alive, was made alive in spirit. Christ descended into hell. Thus, he went and made an announcement to the watcher spirits who are in prison the spirits who disobeyed. The term thus in Greek reads, in which, which could mean either in his spirit or 
when this happened. Those spirits translate the term pneuma, which in the Bible usually refers to non-human beings, and the term here for prison is never used in the Bible for departed believers. And in what way did they disobey? When they intermixed with humans and taught them evil arts. This happened back in the days of Noah. God patiently waited while Noah was building the boat in which God saved only eight persons through the flood waters. The word boat translates a Greek word meaning box, chest, barge, traditionally in English translated ark. How were we saved? When the water lifted the boat. The term for person here is psuche, meaning human soul, used in distinction to spirits. Through the water can be either the means by which we were saved, lifting the boat, or the medium upon which the boat was floating. By analogy, baptism in water now saves you, not by washing away fleshly uncleanness, but by your conscientious pledge of loyalty to God. The term analogy translates a Greek word antipos, or antitype, the word translated pledge can refer either to a promise or to your request to God for a good conscience. We take it here as a promise. Baptism saves you through Messiah Jesus' resurrection from death. After he subjected to himself watcher angels, authorities and powers, he went into heaven where he sits at God's right side. His resurrection means his return from the spirits in hell and from physical death. When he subjected those spirits, he gained victory over enemy spirits. At God's right side implies authority over everything. Now, about these spirits in prison, were those watchers, Nephilim, humans, all of the above? The term spirit, pneuma, can mean any of those. By using the term suke for person, the Greek term for person, suke, always refers to human beings. But the term prison is never used of departed humans in the New Testament or in First Enoch. In Revelation 20, this term for prison refers to the place where Satan will be held for a thousand years. And in First Enoch, we read how that the watchers are in prison forever. Thus, Jewish readers of Enoch and of the New Testament would immediately thought of the sons of God from Genesis chapter 6. Well, what about these watchers in prison? It is written in 1st Enoch, You will not obtain your petition for all the days of eternity, but judgment has been consummated in the decree against you, that from now on you will not ascend into heaven for all ages and it has been decreed to bind you in bonds in the earth for all the days of eternity. In what ways does First Peter consist of types, past events, and anti-types, New Testament analogies? Well, let's look at several points. In the past, God was patient. Later, Messiah Jesus suffered patiently. God saved eight souls. You, though many, are being saved. The ark was being prepared. Likewise, Jesus proclaimed a message. The spirits had been disobedient, 
and Jesus subjects evil angels to himself. Those spirits were in prison, and Jesus went in spirit. There was a boat on the water, which corresponds to, which corresponds to Christian baptism. The water saved by lifting the boat we are saved by Jesus' resurrection out of death. They were saved, and baptism saves you. Now let's recall there are several biblical words used of the watchers. They are called sons of God in Genesis and sons of heaven in First Enoch. They are called angels in several texts. Watchers in First Enoch and in the book of Daniel or just plain spirits, both in Enoch and here in First Peter, and in Enoch and in the New Testament, rulers, authorities, powers and forces in cosmic, in the heavenlies. Types are frequently encountered in ancient literature and in the Bible. Here are 14 biblical types. If Adam was a type, then Christ, the second Adam, is the antitype. Just as God ceased his work, Scripture recognizes a Sabbath rest. The ark corresponds to water baptism, Hagar and Ishmael to legal bondage, Sarah and her son Isaac to God's promise and freedom, the Exodus itself prefigured Jesus' return from Egypt, and when Moses put a serpent on the pole, Jesus said, in the same way, the sun must be lifted up. Passover is fulfilled in Jesus, the Lamb of God. The sacrificial system fulfilled in the crucifixion. The sign of Emmanuel, born to a young woman, is fulfilled in Jesus' virgin conception. The wilderness rebels become a warning to us Christians. Church elders are a type of the chief shepherd, Jesus. The law itself was a shadow of heavenly realities. And Yahweh, victorious in the Hebrew Bible, becomes Jesus, the victor, the victorious one in the New Testament. Returning to baptism now saves you. By analogy, baptism in water now saves you, not by washing away fleshly uncleanness, but by your conscientious pledge of loyalty to God through Messiah Jesus' resurrection from death. Remember, what saves you is not the right of passing through the water, but the resurrection of Jesus upon your pledge of loyalty, that is, allegiance to God in Christ. Your loyalty also leads you to renounce Satan and his angels. If you are in a group, please form smaller groups of two or three individuals, and then take about four minutes to do this. List out fundamental points of saving faith in Jesus Christ, and then formulate a baptismal pledge for candidates. After you have done so, then advance to the next slide, which is a model baptismal pledge. You would ask a candidate, before witnesses, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe that Jesus died to forgive you your sins? Do you believe that Jesus rose back to life the third day? Do you believe that God gives to you everlasting life? And then, do you pledge your loyalty to Jesus Christ? And do you renounce the devil and his angels? Your assignment for next time is to read in the book Reversing Hermon, Chapter 10, Watchers, Nephilim, and the Antichrist, and visit our website, reversinghermon.site. Mm -hmm.